Oh, we got quite a few people in here. Spy Hunter, where you been, buddy? Been hiding. Spy Hunter has been talking to realtors and uh, buying all kinds of stuff at Home Depot to fix his house. So he's got a, a house. He's fixing his house and his rental property. He's got too much money. So uh, we're looking at a chart right now, and yeah, I got a lot of stuff on there, stuff that you haven't seen before unless you saw it in the the Discord. Uh, I'm always testing new indicators and stuff, and I'm always trying to um, put different ones together to see what can make a better signal or, or something like that. So right now, again, it looks like a lot, but there's really not, not much there. I have Ranger, which is these yellow lines and these shaded areas here all going across. That's Ranger, Zooms, and these pink lines. And I have Spy Money Balance. Really what I look at on Spy Money Balance is I want to know this is my main piece here um, as far as the balance itself. And then we have like the TP2, 3, 4, 5, and those are my levels I'm looking for. It won't be 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. So that's what I'm looking for. And then I've also got the mover. I always have the mover on there. And that's this red line coming down and blue right here. And the mover pretty much gives you direction. It don't tell you where it's going to go, but it's going to give you direction. So when you have direction and you know where you're going, it makes trading a whole lot easier. Um... So I've got the, and then I've got Shaker on here. I just threw the kitchen sink at this chart. And it's actually helped me. I don't trade all of it together. I, I trade, well, I guess I kind of do. I look, my main entries are based off of my mover and my pullbacks. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, I'm gonna, John, I'm going to go ahead and mute you unless you can mute yourself. You, down there at the bottom, you can uh, click your little microphone and then mute yourself. There you go. Thank you, buddy. Um, if you only want to talk, uh, you're more welcome to interject and ask questions, whatever. It's open mic. Uh, but if you're not talking, just keep your mic turned off so we don't hear the background. Uh, some people we don't hear background on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to make this a little bit easier to read and we're going to take um, this off and we're going to take that off actually we'll just do this um, I'm going to take some lines off here and let's see how that looks yeah that's a little better um, let me do a little more but I want to show I really want to show you what my main focus is when I'm Trading and take that one off. So really, these two right here are mainly what I am trading. So when you saw all that on there, like over here, you see all that. It looks like a, a big mess, but I'm really looking at this right here. But I have the others on there. The Ranger, I really like the Ranger in the sense that I can see the zones, and it helps me decide. You know where I should put a stop so maybe my zone would be right here so let's go ahead and look at this area right here it's um you can see it popped up into here and then it pulled back so let's go ahead and go back over here and we will see the same thing so um, if this candle right here see it went right up into that ranger and that is the open range low. There's a zone there, and then it pulled back. So when we're looking at this right here, we don't see that right here. Only thing we see is empty space. Our goal is to get the right here. Our ultimate goal is to get the right here. So you've got to try to play that. So when you look at the ranger included on it, and you can see right there that it there is a zone there. And I'll tell you what, just to make that a little bit easier to see, let's do this. Because this really messes up the background. 
And then if I bring this back over, okay. So you can see right there is a zone. I'll get it a little bigger for you. See how it went right up into this zone and then it popped out? So I'm watching this when I have that chart up. But now when I have this chart up, I don't see that right there. I don't know what's there. So if I'm scalping this just to go for 10, 20 points or something like that, which is mainly what I do, then I know that when this pushes up in there, I'm going to have my stop at least right here, at least on this mid, this current session mid. But I'm probably, when that pushes up, I'm going to have my stop right up here. And when that pushes up in there, I'm going to go ahead and just click and put my stop there. And then when it pulls back again, I can hop back in. So when it pulls, when it closed here, it opened, it pulled back down in here. But I can put my buy order in right above this TP2, or I can put it above this zone. Now, a lot of people, like yesterday, uh, I think it was, who was that? Um, uh, Babushka Boy. I'm so glad I can say that name now. Uh, Babushka Boy, I'll call you Bab, it's too hard for me to say. Bab said, why don't you just go ahead and get in the bottom and just wait for the top? Well, you can do that on this, but there's a lot of money right here. So let's just go ahead and look between these levels here. There's $865. I'm not willing to let this go up and pull all the way back to here to get to there. I'm just not, that's just not me. So let's just take one of these candles. These are one minute candles, by the way. So if I went to there and it pulled down to right there, so there's $675 right there per contract, I might add. I'm not willing to do that. I would rather just come in here, you know, if I can get uh, three, four, five, six hundred dollars a contract, then I'm willing to do it because I'm sometimes trading 20 contracts. So if you're trading, it, let's just say you trade four contracts, four is a lot. Well, that's, um, you know, over $2,500 right here in a pullback. Uh, Gamma had run today. Is he in here? Yeah, he's in here. He ran MES today, and he was up um, uh, 20 points or something on that screenshot. And then he ended up, uh, he was up like $700. And then he let it pull all the way back. And actually, I think, was you on? I stopped out at $15 profit. <laughs> 15. You were on MES, weren't you? No, uh, yeah, yeah, four contracts at MES. All right, so let's just look at MES because that's what he was on and everybody saw it. So he got in, I guess, back over in here somewhere. I, I don't know where you got in, but let's, let's just pretend it was here. And when this went run up, uh, he never took profit anywhere up here. Now, he was probably looking to get to this TP1. You don't always hit that though. We opened below the balance. And since we opened below the balance, it is short bias. That's, that's how we read it. Now that's not to say it won't go over the balance and go up and hit this and keep on going. But for the most part, a high percentage, you're going to be short bias. So when this went up, it was, pretty much a given that we're at least going to come back down to the balance and maybe bounce off from it or hit it and keep on going. In this case, we come down close, we come back up. At this point, he never sold again, and then he yeah. just ended up selling off. Yeah, I had two chances there, and I still, I don't know, I'm not sure why I did that, but it's just me being stupid. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I'm going to try to help you here. So let's look at this. You've got, what's that? That's a lower high, right? Yeah. So with that being a lower high, what makes you think it's going to pull back and hit it again? Usually when you have a, you know, when you pull back and you don't break this, if you match it, you know, which would be a double top or below, that's a given you're going to sell off. So what you want to do is when, when this happens uh, and it goes up and it's hard to sell there because you have in your mind it's going there and your trend's going up and you know, you've got your drawing tool here and it's, you know, it's showing, you know, that you ought to be going up. So actually, 
you would be right there. So let's just put it on that one. So your channel is showing up, but when you broke out of this channel, you know, that's, it's, it's now going a different direction. Now that's not to say it won't come down here, come back into the channel or make another channel here. But when you break out of this channel, you're done. You, you don't want to be in this trade anymore once you break that channel. Now, um, the one good part about this um, drawing tool, uh, uh, channel drawing tool that we offer is like right here. You want to start on the first of the break. So like on this one here, we would actually be uh, from here uh, to here. So that's showing the channel here. Well, once you're at that point of the last point of where it's going to be, which would be right on this candle, this bar, all you have to do is go behind it and just drag it over. And then once you drag it over, then you're going to be showing your other bars. Now, right here is another channel. But now see how we broke out of the channel? So now we're just we're going to leave this one right there. And then we're going to take this one and we're just going to throw it over here because we don't know where the channel is going. So as the bars move, this channel will move as well. What's, what's this right here? Anybody? Green. Right. So should you be trading right now? No. Why not? Well, I mean, you could scalp it, the tops and bottoms of it. Right. It you're going to be or playing, middle. You're playing that right there. Now, if you're going to do this, I would probably get off of a one-minute chart, and I would go to a smaller chart, a tick chart, or something like that, so you can get better entries. But, um, you know, overall, you ought to have this chart up as well, and it wouldn't hurt you to have a five-minute chart up as well. So if you had, like, say, say you had a five-minute here, a one-minute here, and then you had a bigger chart over here that your your trading chart. So that would be another way to do it. Uh, sometimes I'll have a daily, a 10-minute, uh, and then a 1-minute. And that way I can see, you know, a, a better um, trading on it. So on this one, let's go ahead and delete all this off here. And when we look at all this, you know, and without all the emotion involved, you know, when we look at this, we think, well, shoot, we should have just got in right here and went up. We should have, you know, right here, you know, this is congestion and stuff. But when we made that lower high, and, and there's not a problem with getting in a uh, long right here. You know, when this come down, I wouldn't be getting in a short. I'd be waiting. I'd be waiting for it to come off this balance. But when it come up and started pushing up and we had another blue air off the mover, that's there's nothing wrong with going in there. But you've got to be tight on those stops. So when you pushed in here, you went up, the most you could have made is $50, okay? Let me go over to something else. I don't trade micros. I'll say I make more than $50. Um, let's go to NQ. You don't want to talk about NQ or ES? I'll do both. Hey. Which one? NQ. Okay. Big E's. Where you been, buddy? I haven't seen you in here. Busy with work, bro. Work. Oh, yeah, you, man. You can't be working, man. Hey, well, you know what? I'm trying to uh, get to that point where uh, I make enough money and I don't got to work. Well, even when you make enough money, you're still working. No, well, you know what I mean. I could just, <laughs> trade, I could just trade instead of uh, instead of actually coming to work. There you go. I wish I didn't have to... Um, work all the time well i guess i don't have to but um man I, I work harder than i haven't i haven't had a job since 91 though no nah, but look hey but you're doing you're doing other stuff you're flipping houses you're making these bots all that shit that's work i'm running your site you know so that's like all work yeah i like doing it though yeah no you know to be honest i mean you know i made decent money you know today but uh you know, I, I just got to occupy myself with uh, things to do for the rest of the day because, no, once you trade, to, you start, once, like, I've been there where I've been home, and, man, sitting in front of that screen, and you just screw yourself over. Yeah, you just got to take your money and be done. Yeah. I want to make, I'm going to learn to make that Brad money in the 42,000 right <laughs> it's, it's actually a little bit more than that now. 
<laughs> not bragging to you. I'm not bragging. Never bragging. Let's see here. I'll post it because I hit a couple little scalps. There you go. But I hit a, a few more scouts. But look at my commissions. The commissions are very low today. I, I did. Um, we had high volume, and I got in, and I'm. I had my stops pretty wide too. Um, I couldn't use the typical stop because the way it was moving on the one minute. So I was taking a chance on it. But you know, overall, like right through here, I was actually in a short right here, and that thing popped up and got me. So I lost money right here. And then, uh, cause no, I, held, hey, yeah. I held my stop up to run through here, which was stupid. I shouldn't have done. I should my stop should have been right off this candle here. That's where it should have been. But, um, and that thing just took off. I thought it was going to drop the way it was going, but this right here was a bull or a, a bear trap. That's what that was. I see how it was kind of going down and it keeps on going down. We drop and we come over here. I thought it was just going to sell off at least down to the TP1. I, I would have taken profit there. But I, I, no, lost, it, I lost big that, there. That drop in the morning at 7 year time, that, that kind of got me. I was stuck in something and thinking as I got out. Yeah, right here? Yeah, I was, I, you know, I kind of got in on a little dip down. And uh, then I averaged down once and then one more time. So I only had three contracts, but still, you know, taking that and then things pop back up. Thank goodness. Well, look hey, right Brad, here. Your your entry would have been right here off the mover, and your exit at the m bare minimum would have been there, nineteen fifteen one contract. No, yeah, a hey, um. That's good I money. Was say, have you have you been using minutes late, lately? Lately, because I've been yeah. noticing with the tick, the tick's been killing me. Like sometimes you get caught, and it's like yeah. fuck. Yeah, I switched you know? over to tick about three days ago, maybe four, and or I'm sorry, switched over to one minute. And um, I'm trading better. It's you got to watch your entries, and that's what I was going to show you all today. Is on your one minute. Yeah. Uh, when you see it start going up, and you're making your your higher lows and stuff. So, right there is uh, really is I guess right here it'd be your support. But see, we never come down. We're making higher lows each time. So we're going up. So you know, even though this is kind of going back and forth, and our support or our resistance is right there. So really, what you want to do is you want to buy on the break of that, then go long. So in this case, I mean, you could have gotten in down in here somewhere, but as long as we're your 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 right area to buy would be right here. There's your support. Cause see how you you wick down there. You touched it. You wicked. You wicked. You're in it. You're in it. You come right down to the top. This shows your support right here. So, but I was on emotion. I was on hope. I was hope trading this morning, and I I missed out on here because we were our mover was red. We had that big drop, but really my entry should have been right at the top of that. And if it had been at the top of that. I could have weathered all this out. And just to give you an idea where your entry would be right here. And it went all the way down to $830. But really, when this comes down, my stop should have been right across the top of that. And I should have been stopped out right here for $380 a contract. And I was in pretty large here. So, but, you know, $380, even one contract is a lot of money. Uh, most people in our group, you know, uh, 500 to $1,000 is their daily goals. So you'd been fine. My, my cat, I tell you, he is something else. He comes to my office, and I've got a bag just thrown in the floor. And he has crawled all up inside that thing trying to take his nap. Um, so on this one right here, you know, really where you should have been in was right here. Right off of this one here, and this is at 919. It's it's sometimes hard to get in at that time because you're 20 minutes to open. But if you would have and just done according to normal trading, let's see here. Your entry should have been um, right 
there. And actually any of these down through here is where your entry should have been. But if you would have, the very tip top, you wouldn't have got that. That's $4,600 on a trade. Now, when you are trading this, you know, when this thing pops up and hits that, it's hard not to take that profit. Now, right now we're just looking at two indicators. We're looking at the, uh, the spy money balance and we're looking at the mover the mover told us to get in we've got our balance right here it's kind of hard to trade from here to there but what i would be doing is when this comes up i would have my stop down here and then when it pops up i'd at least have my stop above break even a lot of times through the balance you will get a lot of noise and when you start getting that you've got to you can't just keep getting in and out because you'll lose so if you get in way before that, when it goes up, you can play that noise. In this case, it shot way up, it opened here, it pulled down, and immediately wicked up. This wick right here tells me that we're going long because the buyers pushed it off of that balance. So when that happened, and then we have our balance right here, that's our US uh, session balance. To me, I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna go to right here. So for me personally, uh, trading this which I traded this morning but I didn't trade this correctly but your entry should have been right here and when this pushed up there my stop would have been rolling through here so that's where my stop had been two thousand dollars contract now a lot of people would will trade risk reward like a one to five or whatever I don't trade that way uh, how I trade is I trade the candles I don't look at, I got to have, uh, you know, a five ratio or whatever. I just, I don't trade it. Um, that's just not me. Uh, some people will not get, you know, they'll get in when it turns blue here on this blue arrow, which would be right here off the bottom of this one. And they won't get out until they have a red arrow, which is right there. That's 33.50. Good money. But you, there's no guarantee that you know, you're not gonna have a big candle like this before the red arrow comes in. So this may come up here and then red arrow the bar right here. You know, when you're trading a one minute, you're gonna to have to have a larger stop. And you know, you've, you've got to look at, you know, if your daily goal is $1,000, then maybe you just put your stop right here at a thousand dollars and you put your stop there and you just let it go and then once it goes up and then once you do get that red arrow you want to make sure that you take your profit but it's hard for me um, maybe not you all but for me it's hard to let something go way up here and then pull all the way back here um, when you first get into this trade, uh, where do you set your stop? How many ticks? I don't go by that. I go by the candles. So like on this one, um, it should be, uh, see, um, hang on a second here. You go like just below the previous candle or? Yeah, hang on a second here. There's, yeah. a, there's someone can't see the screen. Um, so right here, if I'm going to enter, um, if I'm going to enter here, my stop is going to be right here. It's going to be below this candle here. If we go below this candle, then it's probably going to keep on going. Now the, the ideal place would have been to be in here. Once this kept coming down in here, just went ahead and got in and put your stop down there. This would have been the ideal place. And it really kind of depends on what kind of uh, risk tolerance you have. I mean, sometimes I'll be down, you know, $5,000 on a trade, but that's with a lot of contracts. So on this one, if I got in right off the top of that and to right there is only going to be $155. So there's not much there. So once this, you know, closed right here, it opened here and starts shooting up. 
you wouldn't have even gotten this right here probably because once it shot up it it opened right here come down and just kept going up the the proper entry would be right here once this comes down and it opens here you'd already have your entry set up right here and then when it goes up and hits it then i would bring my stop down below here if it comes down below this it's probably going to keep on going because this one here once it pulled down and opened and then shot up um that would be the right place if uh, let's just say that you were up here um let's just say you got in on this candle here so right there would be your entry because when this closes and opens here that's when the blue arrow pops in it this has to close first so on this one uh, the best place is the big picture uh, X or your stop down here below this wick that would be the best place but if you did that that's a quite a bit of draw down there so you've got $510 on that worst case scenario is I would have it right here which is 330 so you know when people trade ticks and stuff like that um, I don't I don't know I mean you just can't trade that on this over here I put this on sim in case we do something but on this one I've got a 40 80 and two contract on this uh, what I usually trade is I'll come down here and I've got a 40 80 and 20 contract that's usually what I'll go in if if I'm profitable already uh, when I start off I will come down uh, I like to put the 200 on there and you know when I first start trading and I'll go in like two to four contracts but I'll usually put like a 200 uh, take profit just so that it'll be way out of the way so on this one, for instance, to show you what that would look like, and this is why I have it on SIM. So we're going above that. Let's just say we end up getting a buy order in there. Our take profit is way up there. Now right here, I would bring my stop to right here. That's where I'd want to be. I'd want to be below the candle previous based on this. Now on this one, my entry would be here. My stop would be here. That's where I want to be. Does that help you? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, and then as this goes up, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put it up here, or maybe we put it higher even. Uh -huh. But as this goes on up, you know, we use the balance. Anything above the balance is going to be long. So right now, as it goes up, if we're up this kind of money, bring it right there to the bottom of that. Hey, Brad. Yes, sir. Hey, question. So, okay, so like, uh, for example, this morning, so our balance, we were right there flirting with the one from the uh, London Open. But then, you know, you, you mentioned that we had the one above from for the U.S. Open. So it's like, how would you do that? Because realistically, we're going into the U.S. session and... You know, based on how spy balance works, whenever we're under where we're going into the open, ideally that's a short, right? But I, I mean, I, I know the chart said otherwise because we were going up. Yeah, hang but... on one second. I got some at the door. Yeah. The way that I use it this morning, I could have made yeah. $700, but right. I wasn't a fucking idiot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank Sorry. you. I, 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 the, the most recent price action was in an uptrend. Uh, you know, three points of, of retraces, and it was above the London spy money balance line. So I figured That's I would try crazy. long, and that worked today. So I don't know. No, yeah, I no, I, I completely agree because um, ba based off like the shaker, the move and the mover, they crossed around right around thirteen oh nine or something like that. Um, this morning, right around open, and ideally that should have been long, but I was scared because. Shit, we were way below the uh, the uh, mm -hmm. the U.S. spy balance, you know. So I didn't um I didn't take it. Should have took it, but you know, yeah, I was just just kind of curious on your thoughts on that. You know, here's my thought. We click on this balance. Yeah. If we're in the U.S. session, just yeah. turn that off because it don't matter anymore. Oh. But 
I, I, I get you. It, it doesn't matter. But at the same time, so then we are completely underneath the other spy balance, the one for the U.S. Open. Which so, means short bias. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, then ideally you wouldn't have caught that move all the way back up to it. So you don't trade until it passes, and then... that's Yeah, it's, it is confusing, though, when I'm... Well, the way what, I did I do, it, what I do is I look at my mover. If we open below it, we would usually go up and test it and pull back. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so okay, and then... Not so then you could Yeah. No, no, of course. But then you could use the you could use a London one kind of as like a little support area, you know. And if we're over that, hey, maybe we'll go up and test the uh, the the U.S. Open. Yeah, because yeah, look at right there where you're at. We, we didn't even go back up to that thing, right. you know. But look at your mover. Yeah, your mover's telling you short. Now, right here, I would be thinking that we're going to go up and test it, but we didn't. What, what here's the biggest thing that you all need to remember when London market ends, you're done. I leave mine on only because you know I'm, I'm just trading it all. Okay. No, yeah, for sure. I agree with you on that. I, I do the same. that one, they're both under, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter once you, you know, get the U.S. open, this don't matter. Let's do it this way. Let's do it. Let's do this. Now this is showing the London open. This is the the balance for London only. Okay. So when we opened at nine thirty, we actually opened above and we went all the way up here. And we came all the way back down, went almost to it right here, and back up, and now we're right here. So if you're going to play the like the London session only, you can, but let's turn, let's, I mean, these are big areas right here, okay? So when you, you can't play it like the U.S. Open on the balance using the London. You're either going to play the London or you're going to play the U.S. You're not going to play them both. So let's go ahead and turn the US on. So when we went above it, we didn't hit this one up here, but all through here, if you look at all of the areas, really, listen, let me do it this way. So the yellows are your London. You can play this a whole lot, whole lot easier on these levels here, which is the U.S. Open, more so than you could have the London. You follow me? Yes, sir. So, when U.S. session starts, just turn off your London, and I mean you can look at it if you want, but and I leave mine on, and I don't turn them off, but I don't pay any attention to them. I pay attention to this because we're on a new session. Um, the math that I use to come up with all this for the U.S. session don't have anything to do with the London. It's just two totally different things. Now you can trade it any way you want, you know, whatever whatever way you want. It doesn't matter as long as you're making money. It don't matter. But um, you know, right here, you you would have this one here coming straight across which is close to the balance today but if we go back to another day see the London wouldn't have helped you any at all because look where you are but your US session the balance is really showing your levels make sense all, all this is, I mean, just, I mean, you look at your London, how tight that is, and then U.S. is wide open. And then if we come back over here on this one, we have, it's wide open up here. These are pretty good size, but it's real tight down here. 
So your levels are, are, it's just mathematical formulas that I use that come up with all this, but it don't have anything to do with different sessions. It has to do with only this session. So like right now, you know, this would be a good idea to get in a short right off the top right here. When that opened, that would have been a good short. We're at the, you know, we open below, so that means we're short bias, right? And since we're short bias, and we popped up, but we come down, and now our mover is staying short there, so right here would be a good place to go into a short. And this is where you would be thinking that you're probably going to go, but I wouldn't put my profit target there. I, I put it down here, and then I just play the stop for my profit target. So our entry would have been right off the bottom of this. So let's just say, uh, say you did that there. And my stop would be right across the top of this candle. And then I would just throw my profit down here because if this tanks, I, I don't want to miss it by having a profit target there. But being that this time of day, the London market has already closed, I wouldn't be trading this time of day anyway. It's this time to just go do something else. That's why I do all these trainings and everything. Uh, when people want me to do stuff, I tell them after 11. Because I'm usually, I usually trade 6 to 9. That's uh, usually when I trade. I don't know why they're having such a hard time getting in. See how it's doing that? Right now, you're just ranging. So if you wanted to, right now, your range would be right here. So that's what you're going to be watching. If you break out of this, then you'd be looking to go to your next target up here, which in my opinion, I think we're going to go up into this range today. Uh, if we go back into look at a 15. So on this one, we are, let's see. So we hit this already, so we're probably going to be right up in here, which is going to be TP1. So TP1, I think, is where we're going to end up being today. Actually, this, let's see, that right? Yeah, that's right. I think that's where we'll end up being. So we come back. That may not be right there. There it is. So... Probably right in here is where we're going to go. So we're looking, I would say at least going to probably go up to here. That's where I would say at least. But I I, I would almost bet that we would be between uh, 416 and 468, if not go up to TP2. I think it's where you get those lines from? These lines right here? Yeah. Uh, it's just doing pullbacks. It's um, in um, How to Trade the Two Step. It goes over all that. Oh. Are you a spot bot lease? No, can't afford it. Okay. Um, in the spot bot lease, whoever's in there, they, they get uh, free courses, and it goes into um, you go to the course How to Trade the Two Step, and it teaches you how to do all that. But on. Um, on this one, let's get back. We, we rabbit trailed here a lot. But when I'm looking to trade, I'm looking at several different things. So these are my two main things I'm looking at, the mover and the balance. So we come back in. And we go into the ranger. And turn that on. When we add this in, now we can see that we have a opening range right here. So really, this area right here is not desired to trade because you're going to have a lot of chop. Your runs are going to be when you come out of it. Now, when we looked at this a while ago, we were thinking to go short here, which we got stopped out. But we were thinking to go short here, but if I would had the ranger pulled up, I would not have entered short there because I'd want to enter short off of the bottom of the zone. So having the ranger on there with me 
kind of helps me look at it in a different way. So right now we're coming back into the open range high. So, you know, we're right there. So my long would be off of here and my short would be off of here is the, the fish strategy. Does that make sense how I've added the ranger into it for really just kind of uh, yeah, like confirmation? That. But when you look at the when you looked at it in the very beginning, it showed all kinds of stuff, and you're like, "Man, that's a mess." But when you understand what each thing is and what you're looking for, you know, again, the balance and the mover are my main strategy. Uh, that's what I'm really focused on. But when you look at the ranger with it, sometimes you won't take that trade, and it will save you some money. Uh, this one right here is where it entered. We end up getting stopped out right there. So if I'd had the Ranger pulled up, there's no way I would have taken a short here to there. I just would not have done it. I just would not have done it. If your short was at the bottom of that range where it kind of passed, you'd be in right now, and your your stop would be above the previous candle? Usually what will happen is this will come through and then come up, and then I would hit it. So okay. I would put my stop here right now, and I'll answer that question, which are, what you asked. So my, my entry would be there, and my stop would be on top of the green. Oh, okay. So you don't do the, with the Ranger, you don't do the previous candle, or because it's a larger candle? Uh, it really doesn't matter. I mean, that's $385 stop. But um, it depends on what your, you know, what candle you are trading what bar i mean i'm trading a one minute here so it's going to be bigger if i was trading a tick it'd be a smaller one did i answer your question yeah thanks okay so right now I'd, i would have an entry here which if you did that you can go ahead and put an entry right there and then if it hits it then i'm gonna immediately move my stop up here and then I'm going to put my profit target, you know, way down. I thought about just making some ATMs without the profit target because I hardly ever use it. If I wanted to, I can always just go in and add it. So the, as long as this keeps on going through here, the way it is, and with it the mover coming down, more than likely this is probably going to come down and retest this mid. More than likely. Uh, if we go back and look at our support, um, our zone is our zone is right there, which coincidentally is the next zone on um, the Ranger. So now, when this comes down, you'll sometimes pull back in there. But we're on the TP1 now. If you wanted, you can put your stop right there and take profit now, you know, cause you're on the TP one. So that's a good idea that, you know, that's, you're going to bounce off of there, but we've got our zone down here with the Ranger zone. We've also got this zone here where I'll look back to find out where, you know, our uh, supply is. And so more than likely it will come down to here. So when this comes down and gets close to that zone, I'm going to go ahead and have my stop sitting right here. And then just go ahead and click, you know, and put the stop there. But, you know, see, so we got stopped out there. But if you, and I should have my stop up, I didn't move it. But, um, so right now, oops, hit the wrong way. That's not what I wanted. That's why we're on sim. Uh, so if I go ahead and do another one right here, my stop should have been up there. So I should still be in the trade. That's what it amounts to. So we'll just let it go in again, and then I'll put my stop where it's supposed to be. Don't you have a? Oh, sorry, guys. No, go ahead. I was saying, don't don't you have a new indicator that's volume that has the volume? Um, yeah, I'm gonna pull it up here in a minute. Yeah, I'd like to see that on the drop if possible. So right here is. I can't really see it. Mine's getting old. Right there is where my stop should be. 
and then my profit target again just put it down here at the bottom of the page and then when this goes down if you wanted you can come down and put your stop there when it hits the TP1 you could have it there it's still good money so if you open your chart up to where you can really see it that way you can detail in where your stops going to be so when this pushes down again you know, maybe you have it there we have our four trading pivot is right there you know coincidentally at the TP1 so on the this volume indicator uh, it works I'll leave a background on there so you can see it. That's our Christmas tree you're basically making fun of. So you can turn this off in the background. It's um, the, the bars show up on top of it. But the way it works is if you have green like over here, that means that this the each there's like this bar is for this bar. You know, they're uh, synced together. If it's green, this bar has more volume than it has in the last three weeks. This very bar, same time. If it is gray, it has um, the same, you know, within 15%. If it's red, it has below average volume. So when it's red, usually you just don't trade it because, you know, and I'm not saying don't, but if you trade it, it's got less volume than what it has in the last three weeks. So on this one right here, and it'll paint the background, you can see there's red, there's gray, there's green. You can change that opacity if you want. So if we open this up, I guess where you can see it. And if you come down in here, you can turn the background off. So now the background will completely disappear. If you want it on, and let's just say you want um, a darker background so you can see it better yeah a thousand dollars on yeah so you can change your colors and all that uh, you can pick how many days back you want and so forth I just use three three weeks but right now you're below your TP1 so a good idea is to go ahead and at least put your break even. And a lot of times, you know, you can put it right there at the TP1 or right above it because it'll sometimes come up. But what we're going to do is we're going to have our stop right here. So when it pushes down in there, because it'll probably go down into here, but once it goes down into there, then you can go ahead and have your stop ready and hit it. And that way you don't take profit there, you know, because if it keeps on going, you don't, you don't want to get it too soon. But if it pops back up, it'll hit there. Now right there, I'm going to raise this up. Now, if I was real live trading, I'd do the same thing. I like to just have break even and let this play out. But what I'm waiting on is, you know, we've got our floor trader pivot here. I'm waiting on this to just to push down through there. Once it pushes down into that green right there, then I'm going to go ahead and click on it. There we go. So now we've got our stop in place. Now I'm going to bring it down here. And here's my next level, the, the CS mid. All right, you made this look so easy. <laughs> well, it's how I trade every day. It is easy, actually. What, what, what was that yellow box there? The yellow area? This right here? Yeah. I, that's, I just looked in the past and looked at the zone. Oh. Let's see, right now, know. I'm protecting profit. There's two contracts, $1,700. Is that horizontal line on volume? Is that a moving average? or This right here? Yeah. No, it's not a moving average. Um. um it's it's somewhat of one, but it's not. It it goes by. There's actually quite a bit. I won't get into what it is, but if it's blue, you're going to be long, and if it's uh, white, you're going to be short, and if it's gray, you're 
I'm just going to stay out of it. So we look back at this right now. We can see that we got in, or not long, but it means to get in the trade. It's not long or short. But when you, this is blue, you can see how we hit this big drop. So that's telling us that our volume is really high. And to get in whatever direction that you are up here. This doesn't tell you long or short. So just uh, whenever you get it, you may want to change the colors of it in order to get away from green red because we think green long and red short. Now something else that, that I do, and I've been doing a lot lately, and I usually don't have that on there. I usually have this on a WMA 13, but I'm, I'm testing something else. So I needed that, but I'll turn on the bars to where they will change the color according to what the mover is. So right now we don't see bullish and bearish candles. We only see you know, the blue for long, red for short. And as long as it's red, we stay short. And as long as it's red, you know, when we get these little pop-ups, then we will just go ahead and sell off again, or uh, short. But it's really, I mean, if, if you only had one indicator, if you just had the mover, you can make a lot of money with just the mover. You know, it tells you the arrow here. It'll even tell you an alert. So if we turn this on, come down here, we can turn the alerts on. And then the next time this changes colors, you'll hear a beep. You can change the alerts, whatever one you want. It says I got a new mention, but I don't know who it is. So John B, you did really well today. $1,259. Good job. You got a lot of people making a lot of money in there. That's, it makes me happy. So how I found that bar, let's uh, let's do this. It's John B here. Hey buddy, you did a good job. Hey, thanks. Yeah, well, I'm still in sim, but uh, uh, yeah, I did good. But I I pulled my uh, uh, stop in one time and I missed a I missed a big uh, run. So I I just have to be patient. Well, but you got to protect your profit too. Yeah, well, that's true, but I missed missed a big run there. <laughs> All right, thanks. We'll talk to you later. Okay. So on this um, gray bar, see how we have all this congestion here? We pulled in here. I took it off of this right here, and it played out again right there. So when we look at that, we're looking at, you know, we can go all the way back to here. Those zones will actually play out, uh, and it would be played off of this one right here. So actually, this zone could actually be created a little bit better right there. So that's covering all this through here. So then when we come back over, see how we touched into it and brought out, touched in, brought out, touched in. We're in it right here. So you just don't trade in that zone. Uh, you can short below it or long above it. But, you know, when you have the mover with it, it, it helps you as far as knowing which direction that you need to go. So you put your entry there. So if you had your entry here, the most that you could have made would have been $1,600. And then this one here, you would put there with your stop down here. And the most that you could have made would have been here. You probably would have taken out here though. There's 2,000. And you can see, uh, uh, we come down here, we touched into it, popped off, but the mover stands short, so we don't go long here. And we could actually hop in right here, and there's 950. You stay in that zone, you come right up into it, pull down, then you popped up, pull right back down to the top. Same thing right here, and right now. So right now, what would you do? Mover's red. 
You're top of the zone. Wait for it to go down under it, and then put your short there. Yeah, either have a short ready to go here, or wait for this to pop up. Come back down, because it'll be blue then. And Find touch into here. And then, if it comes down in, put your long right here, and then let it go. But right now, what you're going to do is you're going to play off of that. So this will be your play for now because you don't know that it's not going to come down here and go. And if it hits here, then we'll put her stop up here and put a profit target way down here. What would the loss be on that? The uh, stop? 340. So you're looking about average. It's uh, 17 points. But, you know, the way it's going right here and coming down and it keeps on making higher uh, lows, I don't, I wouldn't be looking to go short here personally, especially now that we're going up. When this closes above it, um, the, if this one closes above that, then this will turn blue. And if we get a blue, then we take this off. When it pulls back down in, we put her long here to go back up. So the only thing we did is we're, we're doing pullbacks on this. And a lot of people mess up on the NQ in the sense that they don't do the um, the pullbacks. You know, they think, well, now it's going up, so I'm going to hop in. And then they forget that it's still shorting. So once we get down here, if you wanted, you can put a break even up here if you want. I will hold it. I wanted to see it come down in here. Then I'll come up here for a stop. I'll put my break even up here. I hate that. <laughs> what? When it goes down like that and then immediately comes up. Yeah, that's why you and can't you can't be right there. This may stop me out there. Sucks. What, I'm gonna put it right back up because it's just so close right here. Yeah. Now if it kept on going, I would I would have left my stop in play. But now that it's coming down, if it breaks down below this one, I'll put my stop right there. But even right here, I mean, you're still three hundred dollars. Yeah. But you have to allow NQ to play. If not, you're just going to get stopped out to death. See if I'd had it there, I'd still be stopped out. I might get stopped out up there. But see how I'm holding my stop. I've got to go wherever I want. But you could have taken profit down here. See, I got stopped out. So right now, I mean, it's noon. So it's just not a good time to trade. But with having this zone right here, uh, that is just, you know, it's just going to be a lot of people uh, buying and selling right here. This is where your supply and demand is. So if we add, um, I had the histogram on this morning, and the histogram has the same thing. I'll turn the background off. Um, the histogram, the way it works is that if you're above this line, this right here, the zero, it's a long. So to give you an idea, uh, right here is a long to right there. So that was accurate. And then right here would be uh, long to right there, accurate. Right here is a short to right here, accurate. You can trade just this alone. So if we take all those off, and then we add this, and let's just say we do a 30. And a 30 just so you can see it real good and see how it plays out and this one the volume you can only play on time chart you can't play on tick but on this one you can play a tick chart it takes a second to calculate you can play this on a tick chart if you want but look at on the tick look how sloppy this is this is all chop but if you had gotten in if you played this on the uh, balance 
got in right there and it actually hit even though it <coughs> went back and forth that's the mover making that noise so it said that we had a uh, change I'm gonna turn that off I don't like it it's got to recalculate there we go so you would still made rate 55 just playing the balance alone you know once you come down you get the red candles that tells you short you just weathered all this out didn't you know keep on trading it personally I would have been at when this come down and then we had the collar change come down I'd probably have my stop right across the top for 490 if I was gonna go that long but I don't trade that long you know I'm looking to scalp this in here so now we're going long now if we come back over to our one minute and that, oh I took that out that um when I cleared out my chart I took that zone out so say we broke out above it so that tells us that you know we could go long from a Christmas tree off so if we were actually trading this like we were a while ago our long would have been in here because we had our you know movers changing colors so we would have had our entry here we'd had our stop there and we'd be looking to go right here there's 1120 so on the mover usually what will happen with the NQ is you will shoot up you will pull right back down into it and then you'll take off again now what people want to do is when this starts taking off they want to go ahead and hop in it and then it pulls that down and stops them out well if you just wait on this thing to pull back you'll make more money so you don't want to chase this up you want to wait for it to go up and then all the institutions once they bought in here then they'll quit buying and then they'll just start pulling back and then when it comes down here again they will protect their position and buy more because right here is where they bought a lot of uh, contracts and then when it started going up they quit buying it because they're getting a not a good deal then so they're gonna wait for this to start pulling back again and then they'll come in here and then they'll just shoot up again they usually come right back down into the mover but see here it's starting to kind of go so now everybody's gonna start trying to tag along but this will more than likely pull right back down in here nope we missed it usually it will pull right down on this mover if you look in the someone mentioned 2020 hindsight see here how it went up then we pulled right back into it and then we took off uh, same thing uh, let's see we went up we kind of pulled kind of pulled we never really had to pull back here uh, this one here is a good you know, indication that it's not going to go short because we never pulled back into it this one here we come down pulled into it and then boom oops let me move that uh, this one here we went up pulled back into the mover and then boom uh, this one we come down pulled into it didn't really hit, take off but it did pull back into it uh, this one here pulled into it and then got in so when we pull back into it we want to get in right here that's where we want to get in or at least the break of this candle right there so if you would have played this one say you know when that pulled in you opened got in there there's 405 and it works all hours of the night now this one just kept on coming down we finally pulled back into it and then you get in that's not to say you don't trade that but if you just think of it this way when you pull back into it right there so we would actually get in here and there's 1420.
these are safer plays. You're not going to get every trade, but they're safer. When this thing's coming down, it drops. We pull back into it. And we would have entered right there. The most you could have got was 335. Same thing here. This one went up. Didn't quite pull into it, but this big wick, that's a good opportunity that you know we could have got in up here to play it. You still could have picked up points there. Um, this one actually kind of went up, pulled back into here, so actually your entry would have been there. Entry been here. This one here, when we pull back into here, pulled way down in here. I don't like those. I just want to barely touch into it. But when you have it pull way back, that's not good. But if you got in there, you would have stopped out. You come up, retested, got the little wick in there, and then took off. You got your money back. Does this help everybody? We got uh, Young Fab in yes. here. She's like the the money tree. Big twenty eight sixty two fifty. She's putting you boys to shame. I love it. I can't believe you're all gonna let a girl out trade you. Just you wait, young fab. Just <laughs> you. When I start taking profits, oh boy. <laughs> Instead of fifteen dollars, it'll be seven hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that fifteen to fifteen thousand. So we'll, we'll I love it. Can't wait. Can't wait. Here's another one. We pulled into the mover. Boom. So you know, even if you got in right here, that would be the better trade, which have been in the bottom of this candle. If you did that, put your stop right on through here, and then the most you could have made on that one would have been twenty seven hundred dollars. That's a London market. But with this pull back into here, really your entry would have been there. And most you could have got would have been 1310. Still good trade. Still real good trade. That's right. You can't go broke taking profit. $15 or $700, it don't matter. Uh, <laughs> There's so many, I was, I don't know, like today I just, I, I don't like, you know, trade for a living and I, I'm okay with, with what I make and stuff. So I was just messing around hoping for like a big run. But normally, yeah, I'm going to start taking the, um, like I, I could have had my stop at the balance or whatever and uh, eventually hit out for 500 or so or 400. But yeah, yeah. It's just, just one of those days I'm just messing around. Yeah. I mess around too, but I take profit. I did a, a, a U profit evaluation today, hundred thousand dollar account, passed it too. <laughs> it's um, a question for you, Pat. Uh huh. So for um, using the uh, super trend bot, I uh -huh. trade alongside that. But what could I add on to it to see, you know, like TP ones or things of the balance or and or. Um, the ranger how can i add that on because i have the settings um and they've been working pretty well and but you know when i set my profit target or even my stop limit i don't know exactly where's a good place to put those per se so on the super trend yes on the super trend bot that i trade so if you add the super trend and let me take the color bars off of this one. So right now the super trend, when this closes, it'd be going for a long. So the mover would have got you in quicker in the sense that right here is where our entry is based on what we were just talking about. So you went up, you pulled back into it, our entry would have been here. So for the mover, your entry would have been right here. And you'd be looking, you know, realistically for the spy money balance. Right now, we're still waiting on the entry for the super trend. So the super trend takes a little bit longer um, to get, but I personally think no matter what indicator you have, the balance is the best one to have in your chart because then you know where you're going. 
you know, like right here, we, we pushed up, we pulled right back into it, and then we pushed off it again. You know, uh, the super trend never entered, but even if it pops up, let's say the bar closed up here, it would be an entry and there's not much room there. So if you've got the super trend indicator and you're trying to trade it, and if you have the balance indicator on there as well, sometimes it will tell you there's not enough um, room here to make any profit. So if you're trading the super trend, how this thing pushed up in there and then come down, this is not a trade that would be taken on the super trend because there's just not much there to get. So to answer your question, I think, I mean, the mover works great on anything. The mover and the balance are my two favorite indicators that I have. And, and the movers, I've traded with the mover for 20 years. So it's just my favorite. It's simplistic. It's, you know, it's red short, blue long. But you still have to read because, you know, like um, right here you had a blue and then it went back to red. You got to understand that you can't trade those. So right here is where your entry would have been on super trend. Now doing it manually is hard because it happens so quick. But the bot would get this trade real, real easy. I mean, you'd already be in. Or manually, you might have gotten in up here and then, you know, your stop's way down. So right now, our stop on the bot would be right here. But I, I don't allow that big of a stop. I bring my stops up closer because if we break this right here, we're more than likely going to keep on coming down. I'd rather lose money here as here. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So, uh, so you could be pretty much adding on the balance indicator and the um, and the mover indicator would be a good idea. Because, like I said, right now I just lease the bots, so I trade alongside the uh, super trend bot. Uh -huh. But I I'll need to purchase the indicators to add on to the chart for it as well. Yes. Okay. And, and okay. If, if you're only going to buy one, I'd buy the balance. Oh, okay. If I was okay. going to buy one so indicator, starting. it would be the balance because the balance lets you know your levels. Trading right. is all about yeah. levels. Exactly. And that's what, so say if you, if like how the current, <clears throat> excuse me, candle is right now, say if you, we, the, I did enter that trade or you did enter that trade. Where would you put your stop? Would it be below the TP1 there, or? Yeah, I, I would be. I mean, because this went up, it pulled back to here, and then went up, so it would be off of the right here. I'm looking for the pullback. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, I got. I haven't even turned it on yet. I got the new release on Spybot Mover today that has the pullback um, stop on it. So let's say, uh, let's just say the mover would have entered right here. To give you an idea. So right there is where the mover would have entered. And the stop would have been wherever your initial is. And then when this goes up and it pulls back to right here and then takes off, the stop would go right here. It'll automatically move. So it's going to keep you in the trades longer. And it's a choice. I mean, the person can use it or not. It's your choice. Nice. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. But I'm going to load it a little bit later today. My wife's been gone for a week, so she's coming home here shortly. So um, I know we're, we're supposed to go out to dinner tonight with some people. Ranger, actually. Ranger in the group. He lives here close. I've known him forever. He's bought real estate from me and heating and air from me and training from me. He's a good friend. So let's uh, let me go back to this other one here. So we've shown what we can do there. And now when we come back over to everything. Now one thing I didn't show, but most of you know how the shaker works. I'm not going to pull it off by itself, but this gold and blue line is the shaker. And then these white 
uh, lines are the take profits. So when I'm trading all of it together with NQ, I usually leave two on there. I don't leave all five. And the reason I leave two is because it does give me an idea of, of where a lot of friction is going to happen as far as trying to get over a buck. If you see this line now, you'll see that, and this is just going to be a close. See how it has just traded along that? And then if we look up here, we have another one. If it went up there, it would probably come up to it, kind of bounce a little bit, and it's just hard to get across it. And then we have this shaker right here. So how I'm looking at the shaker to trade is if it's blue, I'm looking to take longs because you know we're above that shaker. So every time the mover turns blue, I'm going to be looking to go to long. I'm not going to take my shorts when this is like that. Now, right through here, I'm not saying I wouldn't take any shorts. Like through here, we're coming off the bottom of the range or open range low. Uh, that's a good place to take a short all the way down. But I'm not going to be looking to take way down. But uh, if we look at this, you'll see that how it will play right off of that shaker. So when this goes up and we break down below this area here, you can pick up some extra money there. Uh, let's just say that you know you close there, you're right here. That would actually be the entry based on the mover. And since we're this close, I'd probably go ahead and enter there or right here. More than likely, I would probably enter off the bottom of that. And then to right there, the most you can make is 765. But realistically, when that popped down and pulled back and then you open here and kind of kept going, I'd be having my stop probably rolling through here. That's where my stop would be. So there's three hundred and ten dollars. That's twelve hundred dollars with four contracts. That's you know one trade. This one trade right here will do most everybody's um, daily goal. And then you know when this popped up, you know we don't get in. You know when it gets up here, you know maybe you have an entry right above this green line here. But um. I probably wouldn't on this one. This is such a big candle. I probably wouldn't have done anything. Uh, look at that now. Man, that's shooting up. So it's going for the TP1 is what it's going for. And we've stayed in this range, the Ranger range, all day. And it finally broke out. But we would have been in back here for a long that's where you would have been in and just kind of played around. So if you're a long trader, which I'm not, but if you're a long trader, you would have been in right there, which um, more than likely, see, based off that, so you probably would have been in about right here. And that'd be 21.55. If you could have stayed in that, I can't. I just can't do it. Even moving your stops up uh, to each little pullback would have worked perfectly on that. Well, the only problem is is well, not the not the last one. I guess the middle one. Yeah. But yeah, you're um, if you've got in right here, and then that pulled back to here, then it pulled back to there, then you would have got stopped out right here. Yeah. So. And then it took off, and you say, "Dag on it." They knew it. They don't care. We're we're nothing just, to them. You could get right back in on the mover there, right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can, because I mean, your, your entry would have been right here. And then yeah, you'd be looking for here, and then you've got your see how those fibs line up, and then we've got a ranger right there. So if you played to right there, seventeen thirty. But I like to use the fibs of um, on the Ranger, the 100, 200, and I'll show you what it looks like. I don't use the default settings. I changed them. Uh, right there is the, the fibs I use, 100 through 800. And I relabeled them so I know what they are. 
So I, I like to see the hundred. And what that is, is um, you know, the difference of your opening range here. It's going to be the same from here to there as it is from here to here. So it's in 100s. So it's, it's actually the opening range doubled every time. But look how it plays out. Look how it went right up to it, opened here, played around a little bit, and then shot up. Now here we are playing with that one. Those, you know, the 100s are, it's just incredible. The Ranger has those? Yeah. Okay, and what's the FTP again? Which one is that that keeps moving? Uh, that's the floor trader pivot. It's way down here. Oh, it's on the Ranger as well? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, okay. So if we took, um, let me do this so you can just see what. This is all Ranger. Other than this, which would take that off. So if I took off all of the, this is all Ranger. Rangers is just incredible and it actually has more on it than what I'm showing like say you wanted um, um, Your risk reward You come down here uh, So you put a say you had a 40 point stop you can turn all of these on or whichever one you want and You can turn your long entry your short entry um you can even turn like a bunch of different texts on it. So now, and I know it's a lot, but you wouldn't have all this on. It's just showing you. It'll show you your entry. That red dotted line is your stop. Your green dotted line there, if you can see it, is your entry. Right there. There's your entry. There's your stop. So if you're trading it manually, you'll know exactly where to put your stop. But, you know, if you enter, just use your, your ATM strategy. And then, you know, here is your risk reward based on 40 tick. Wow. And it'll show, you know, whatever percentage you want or whatever. What I do is I don't have all of these on. But if I come down here, I'll usually have like a three, a five, an eight and a ten and I turned the loan stop off because I, I know where it is I don't even have the loan um, in short entry because I know it's that look at that thing go and then when you come down here I turn the um, the price off percent off the ticks off I turn the pips and I have it on both sides so now we're just looking at the dollar amount. It's all I care about. And then you're only looking at the ones that you're interested in. And if you want, you can uh, take the labels off too if you don't even want those on. But let's say if you would have entered based on the entry of uh, one tick above the open range high, you'd have made $2,000 on one contract right there. But see how it comes up and it plays, comes right back down to the zone. We went right into it. We pulled in. I mean, the zones work great. And that's why I have it on a chart when I'm trading because a lot of times it's, you know, maybe your, your mark is right here, but you've got this zone. Well, when it hits this zone, this is what it's going to do. That's and, crazy. Yeah. And if we go back, look at different areas you know just a different time chart or not time chart but different time of day uh, you know we hit this we and we just kept coming down into it and then you know, here it is we wicked all the way down to here to the top of it there's a lot of money in playing this and then if you add the mover on top of it which is what fish does uh, here lately he's been trading the mover shaker balance and ranger but on this one let me turn that arrow on and um, so it's saying to go short right here which would be the entry would be on top of this candle so on this one our entry would be there 
and let's just say you played it all the way down to here. There's seventeen hundred dollars. So the mover is pretty powerful, to you know, for direction. You still and you can't just you can't just trade red blue though. I mean, you you still got to look at your chart and stuff. And then you know, now that we're looking at this, now let's just add the balance to it. So if we add the balance. And I'll turn London off so you all don't get confused. So the balance we have right here. That's our balance. And then we're looking to go up here. That's probably where we're going to go, which I hope we do. I hope it just rages hard because I've got spy calls. A little, little cash account I started. I forgot about it. I got in calls on it yesterday, and after I did the thing, tanked. So I'm hoping I've got 427 calls. So if we go up to 4270 or higher today, that would be sweet. But I need a good hard rage. It can't just gradually go there. Anybody have any questions on any of the indicators or the entries, exits, whatever? Your volume indicator for sale yet? Um, I was going to post it last night. I didn't. I'll probably post it here in just a little bit. That one, I really like it. it it's not something I would trade alone with uh, by no means. I think it's just uh, something to let you know. Um, shoot, I'm going to turn that off. You don't need the background of it. I've got it on in case someone wants it. I just want to be able to see it. It only works on time charts, though. No ticks. Uh, so you have to have one minute, five minute, whatever. Um, it'll totally replace the ADX, right? No, it's two totally different things. Uh, let me add the ADX so you can see the difference. The ADX is telling you um, kind of momentum coming in. It's it's not at all. They're not even really close. So see right here is saying that you should have got in on um, actually it's right here. Right there is where the ADX is saying that the mo momentum is coming in. And again, actually, if you if you wanted, you could actually take it back to where it turned green. Um, that would put you in right there. So the volume is not telling you the volume of that candle today. It's telling you of that candle right now based on the last three weeks of trading. So it's going to be looking at um, the last 15 days. of um, uh, So it's going to be every day at this exact same time at 1222. It's going to tell you the, the average volume of every candle that day for the last 15 days. And it's saying right now it's got lower than normal volume based on the last three weeks for that bar. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you see the gray, that's saying that it's about the same. Green, there's more volume on this candle than there was in the past. Uh, when you look at all this, it it's not something you want to necessarily trade alone by, but it will let you know that you know, hey, we've we've got a lot more volume than normal. The problem with a, a volume indicator, and I think Ninja Trader's got one on there. Let's see, I never use them, but um, so let me add them here. I don't know which one's which. Okay, so that one right there is one. Uh, when we're looking at this, this will show the volume of this candle, but it don't tell you anything. You know, it's showing that you're getting more volume coming in, which is kind of the same thing the ADX, not really, but kind of the same thing the ADX will tell you. But you're getting the volume of that candle. Well, this one right here, I mean, if the higher this is, the more volume you're getting. 
but you're still below normal volume. That's why I'm saying you can't trade by this alone, but when it's red, it's a good indication that you, know, you just don't have the um, volume that it normally has. Does that make sense? Um, so it basically helps you play the momentum if that's if that's what it that we're saying. Sort of, yeah. Like you're yeah. playing the way that you should. Based, like say you're using the mover uh, all around the left side, and you 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 see it passing it. Um, so you want to go short at that point, or the yeah. Yeah, the so, mover's going to be shorter short or long. Yeah. Right. So, but at, at, if you had both on, as I'm saying, then you could. Based on what the mover is telling you, you could potentially keep going in that direction based off the volume that it's that's yes. happening to the volume. Okay. Yes. So like right here where we've got a lot of green, that means that we've got more volume coming in than normal for the last three weeks for each one of these bars. And then so with that happening, you know something's getting ready to happen, but we don't know what yet. But when this was going sideways, I was hoping that it was going to sell off here, but it didn't. And it ended up reversing, and then the volume just kicked in. And look right here. Now, this right here was higher than normal volume, the gray. But it wasn't like, you know, ex and when it's green, it's really, really high. A lot more volume. So they were building, accumulating right here, and then right here. And then all of a sudden, they started, you know, not putting so much in it, but they kept running it up. And then mm -hmm. when they got up here, and they started coming down, they really sold it off hard with a lot more volume than normal. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, I saw I saw you, I don't know if it was a video or something, but I saw the gray. I'm like, every time the gray happens a lot, it changes direction or something. So I'm like, what is that? Yeah, the, the gray is just means medium volume. It's um, just, just over 100% volume, uh, between 100% and a certain percentage uh, that I have. So it's very low. So it's really just saying that it's going to be the same or a little more than normal volume for these candles over the last three weeks. But when you look at the red, that's just saying that there's really nothing. And, you know, if you look at the gray right here, it's just normal. And it's kind of ranging. Usually when it's red is when you get the range. It's, it's um, because there's not much volume. It's below normal. Even though you will still get runs, that's why I'm saying you can't you can't say oh, I'm red, I'm not going to trade at all, and then green, I'm going to trade because you've still got to watch up here to see what's going on. But it's just giving you that um, extra confidence of knowing that hey, I've got above average volume. Let's see which way they're going, and then when you see which way they're going. And there's more volume coming in, then you feel good about getting in, and not only getting in, but staying in that trade. But like right here, we had a red bar. Just to give you an idea. So this red bar doesn't say anything about this handle right here other than it was below normal uh, volume that's all it says but when you see all of this right here this green that's a lot of accumulation but we don't know which way it's going because we're still ranging now if we looked at uh, the ranger on because that's um, London session so we're going oh that's actually on London I didn't change it so when we look at the London session, that's you know all the volume is kind of selling off here. So right there is you know we're staying on this channel selling off, but Really, what they were doing is accumulating. As soon as they'd go up, they would you know, sell off a bunch and start accumulating again. And then when it broke out of this channel here, that would have been the entry. Yeah, you know, that you would have known once it broke out of that channel that you're going to be good to go. So at this point here, you know, a good entry would have been there, and you just stayed in to you know say the bottom there. Oops.
the very top would have been 4300 which you know we wouldn't have got to see how the ADX moves with this volume you know right at 930 the open the volume just spiked and then it just kind of just went on uh, on the downside but our volume has just gradually decreased yeah And then right here is where it actually broke out and picked up, which is where we were there. So the volume indicator is not something I'd recommend anybody just to trade by, but it is very good to know kind of what's going on based on the last three weeks. The same thing. Hey, with, go ahead. I just said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Same thing with the volume yeah, you know, just a regular volume indicator. It don't tell you long or short or whatever. It just says there's a lot of volume coming in. You know, if we look every day, it's going to be like this about every day. So if we come back in. Uh, let's look at. See here, same thing. That's the reason I never look at it because it don't tell me anything. Now right here, this is showing. Uh, lower than normal volume, but we still sold off hard and it was above this line And when it's above the line, that's a good indication that it's you know a lot coming in but it was still below So if you'd if you had seen this and just saw red Yeah, you'd be thinking, you know, if you're trading by itself, you'd be thinking, you know, don't get in But you know where it's much higher That's a good indication. It's lower but it's still a good indication since we're above this here that it's there's a lot of volume coming in. And come down here, then all of a sudden now we're getting accumulation. That's what all this is. A lot of accumulation. And then right here it ended up dumping. So they were probably accumulating their shorts all through here. And then every time it'd come up, they'd just start shorting off again. They'd start buying them more. They were protecting their investment. So if you look at this one, from there to there is our zone. Every time it went up there, they would start selling off more. They'd let it build up and then sell off more. To help you understand what they're doing, Because every yeah. time it comes up, if it don't keep on going, they're just they're just going to sell it off. And these are the bears in control. Now if we look over here today. A lot of stuff on the chart. Let's take all the indicators off and just look at the candles. And let's look at a five-minute chart. So when we look at a five minute chart, uh, let me change the and we look at today's and we try to figure out what they're doing. You know, we can come in, we can draw zones and so forth, and uh, kind of right here's one, and then we have another one. Uh, right here we come back and we got another one right here so right there so those are our zones that we're looking at so when we go back and look we can see you know that kind of comes down we play in and those are close I, I didn't get to an exact but those are our zones, and since we broke out here, we're probably going here because see this big drop? That's going to fill. And we're probably going to come right up to here. I'd like to see it today. I mean, that's, that's a lot. I mean, that's 500 points. It ain't going to happen. It could, but it ain't going to happen. So right now, we're playing across the top of that zone. There's still, you know, it, it could still drop down here, but more than likely we're probably going to go up to here.
that's our next spot which is right here so when you draw these zones out and just kind of look to see where your supply and demand is and that that's that helps you know where it's going now if we throw just uh, for giggles let's throw the balance on there and just see how it lines up with it so the balance is showing about right here which is you know if you look right in here there's a lot of congestion there but it don't have anything to do with this I've got another indicator that's coming out uh, actually two that's coming out today um, not to the public but I'm supposed to get them back today and when I get those then I, th I think those are going to be game changers because they trade off of this price action they, uh, you put it on a one minute candle and it just scalps it I'm going to build um, two bots with it once I get the indicators done and make sure everything's fine I'll build the bots for them and they'll go in with the lease and I, would, I think that those bots will probably be the best bots I have. Now there, there's, there's no settings to back test or nothing. You just turn it on. Anybody that can turn on a computer and not know how to trade can run it. Very simplistic. Sounds like one for me. <laughs> I tell you, Ranger, I... Ranger is a good bot, but it's man, it's hard. It's it's very complicated. So I don't I don't even um, it's on there, and I've got videos and everything, but I don't even try to train with it right now. It's it's the hardest bot we have, but it's it's a good bot. It, it trades well. But see how this uh, went, come down, went up. We pulled right into it. That would have been your entry. So let's just say you got in right here and you would want to be below that which is a very large stop and your profit will be right there but you would have to have that stop i mean the best place is the inner right here once this come down and get your entry there to go we're so we're late for the game if you're late for the game it's going to cost you more just think of it concerts always cost more the day of instead of before so whenever you're um, trading futures, you want to get the best deal that you can. You want to shop around, which means it takes time. And when you shop around, you'll eventually get a better deal. And when you get the better deal, then you get in and wait for the housing boom and sell it at the top. Now, that's not a trade I would have gotten in, but I'm just showing you. It's too late. Now, if you add the mover to that, and I've got an update for that thing I need to post. It doesn't change anything other than it puts it in this file. So whenever I post it, if you want it to be up there, then uh, you can put it on there. You can do that date. But see how this is just going sideways here? You know, from there to right here, that's probably just a good place not to trade. And actually, let's do this one. Um, dark purple. That's too dark can't see it so this will be our range that we're in right now and you know it's either going to break down below or go above a good in a good thing to look at is usually when you break above the balance it will sometimes pull right back down to it just like a fib or anything else There's no um, magic bullet indicator for anybody. There's a lot of different indicators you can trade from. And it's just a matter of finding out what works with you. 
the balance in my, or not the balance, but the uh, mover in my opinion is the one that will help you with the entries the best. As long as you pay attention to it, you can't just go in long blue and red short. You can't do that. But if you look at everything else going with it, it'll help you with your trades. Uh, for instance, like right here, you know, when it pulled back into here, you'd want to get into a short. Uh, you could even hop off of this right here and go short, or when it pulls back in and you get your first red candle, hop in. So it could have been here, it could have been there, or when it pulls back into it, you could have just got in there. The safest bet is the break of this bottom right here. That's your safest. If it breaks that, it's usually going to keep on going. Same thing here. When that, you pull back into it, you get in the break right there to go up. Uh, this one here, it goes up, it pulls back into it, you get into the break right here. Uh, this one doesn't ever really pull back into it. Uh, this one pulls back into it, but you didn't get in there because you're looking for the break. This one here, it went up, it pulled back in, you get in the break here and go. Uh, this one, when it comes down, when it gets that close, I would play the break right there. This one went up, touched the mover, and we got in our break right there. So say it stopped out. But again, that's not where I would have got in. Only because we were too late to the game. And your mover's uh, red. If anything, you'd be getting in a short about where I got in long. But when this is chopping like this, you just don't trade it. Any more questions? How do, I convince, how do I convince my wife to get some of these? To allow me to get some of these? <laughs> I don't tell my wife anything I'm buying. I buy houses, cars, <laughs> everything else. All right, I'll do that. I made an offer on land yesterday, and um, they they turned it down. Of course, you know, I'm not ashamed to hurt people's feelings. So you throw enough darts, eventually something's going to hit. But, you know, I, I told her I bought the buy one. I bought two houses one night. Um, I don't want to take anyone else's time, but real quick question. So you said the mover and the balance are good together. Um, what other combos are good? The ranger and... The ranger mover is what Fish uses. Okay, yeah, um, ranger I think mover. The, I think the mover works with anything. Period. Uh, shaker, mover, balance, ranger... Uh, super trend. I think the mover is works great with anything. I also think that balance uh, works well with everything. So I think between the mover and balance, I think they're both somewhat equal. They're they're different, but they're somewhat equal, and they both work good for everything. I I mean my on my charts usually not every day, but. I always have the balance on there and always have the mover. No matter what I'm trading, those two are always on there. And But I like the ranger as well because the ranger gives me the zones to trade to and from because I'm a scalper. So I'm not looking to go for, you know, 30 points. I'm looking to, you know, for the pullback. You know, I'm trading, you know, before the pullback happens. So like on... You know, with me, when I'm when I'm trading, um, this one right here is showing uh, down movement. So naturally, I'm going to be looking for shorts, and we're below the balance, so that's telling me shorts. And then when we come up, I'm not going to be hopping in along here. Uh, I'm not going to hop in along here until we get the pullback into the mover, and then I'm going to be looking to take along. Oh, okay. So that pullback on the mover is very, very important. That's probably the most important thing you'll learn. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, which one should I buy? You got a lot of stuff. And, you know, there's, they all work. It's just a matter of finding your flavor. Yeah. My, my problem is usually is, is the entries. So like, that's good to know. The mover's your best one for entry. If you just play the pullback. When it goes in, wait on the pullback into it, and then get in on the next one. 
you can either get in right here, like when this pull back into it, and then you open here, you can get in there and put your stop down below it. Or you can just play off the break right here. But, you know, a lot of times when you play that break, you're going to have a big stop. Um, when it pulls back in and then you enter on that next bar, put your stop like one or two ticks below this bar, and that'll be good. Um, one of them, um, I won't say why, but the indicator coming out tomorrow would be that right there. Actually, I take that back because your your exit would be different so um, you would be a similar look at that so good that Right there is what your scalp would be with that new indicator. That's where your scalp would be, $185. But again, yeah, this it's going to be scalping all the way up through here. It's not just looking for one scalp for the whole run. And then the um, uh, your next one would be. Right there, so it'd be ninety-five dollars there and hundred eighty-five there, and you'd be looking at uh, it would actually enter right here, and it would exit there. So it's four fifty-five. That would be the next one. If you come over here. Seeing you there. It's gonna be nice when the indicator's done. It just shows it shows an arrow. As soon as it happens, it'll show the arrow. Uh, this one over here, you would be uh, X entry here, and your exit would be there. Uh, this one, your entry would be here. And your exit would have been right here. That's where they'd be. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. That's, he's waiting on me to name it. I got two different ones. I don't know what I'm going to call them yet. The Taker. Uh, let's see here. For open, someone, I don't know, I understand that guy's question. The, hi, Carlos. Yeah. He, I think he's saying, like, he, he wants to start a company, like an LLC, um, kind of like for tax purposes, maybe, or something, to trade with futures looking to open LLC. okay gotcha that would make sense is he in here no he's not in here uh let's see i have a c corp so this is not tax advice i'm not an accountant i'm not a financial consultant so disclaimers do as, do as you want. I'm just going to tell you what I do. I have a C corporation. I have it in a state that does not have state tax. Therefore, I save more money. I have LLCs. I have four businesses. Each business has its own LLC. My, my corporation owns all of my LLCs. Therefore, all the money that my LLCs make go into the C corporation. The C Corporation used to pay 21% tax, now it's 28%, thank you, Biden. And so when they say that they're only going to tax the rich, you know, like the big corporations and stuff, well, I'm a single person and I'm a corporation, so that's a lie. Um, there's a lot of, most companies are C Corps if they're smart. 
if you're if you want to be an LLC, there's no tax advantage to an LLC. Um, not really. I mean, you can write off some stuff, but for the most part, there's no tax advantage because you're still paying the ordinary income at the end of the year. So if you're making half million dollars a year, and you know you're going to be paying out um, roughly, I think 48% or so. So just call it half. So you pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And if you made a half million dollars in a corporation, you're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars. That's actually be um, five hundred. So be a million be two eight. Pay one hundred forty thousand dollars. So you'd pay in taxes. So your corporation is going to pay less taxes than your uh, LLC. Here's the kicker. If you need that money personally, then a C corporation is not your thing because you'll just have to write yourself a check and pay your taxes and all that stuff out of it and pay ordinary income. So an LLC is probably better for you. The problem uh, with most is, well, what I do is I don't, I don't need money personally because I don't buy anything personally. I don't own anything personally. If you sued me, you'd get nothing because I could get food stamps. So, but what I have is a corporation. My corporation buys everything, buys your vehicles, houses, all the property, everything I have that corporation pay, you know, buys. So I don't need money. I just need enough money to kind of buy my food and live on, except my corporation um, pays for meals and stuff, and I get to write off 50% of that. So really, it only costs me 50% to eat out. So when it comes to your taxes and stuff, it's actually, depending on your situation, for me, it's better for me to have a C corporation, and each one of my businesses is an LLC owned by the corporation. Uh, there's another thing that you can do is you can have an offshore trust account. When you have an offshore trust account, you can pay that, and it's not it's a trust. You don't have your name on it, but if you have that, then you can have the um, um, disbursements from your C corporation to pay that um, company a consulting fee. So when you do that. I just lost one of my monitors. Uh, when you do that, you are going to have a direct expense. So when you have a direct expense, you pay no taxes on your C corporation because your trust account now has all the money. So I don't know why that thing did that. So if you pay your um, company, your well, not yours, if you pay the trust account, say you made a million dollars this year, and you'd have to pay $210,000 in taxes or $280,000 in taxes. But if you have a trust account, and if you had a million dollars, you could just pay that trust account a million dollars in um, consulting fee. And that trust account in the Bahamas is not going to pay any tax. That's your lesson for the day. I'm not a financial consultant. I want to do that. <laughs> so then if you, there it is, now it's working. Then if you pay that trust account and then your C corporation needs money, you could potentially have another trust account in the Grand, Grand Cayman Islands. And you could have Bahamas pay the Cayman money, which is, fine and it is legal and there's no taxes and then you can borrow money from another trust account uh, to buy whatever purchases you want and then you have to pay it back with interest and then it's just like a revolving door i'm not a financial consultant not a cpa i don't give financial advice just to what what i've kind of might do, may or may not do. That's what. That's how you can do things. I should have wrote that down. Damn it. Yep. So thank. It's in a recording. <laughs> but uh, that's um, kind of what you can do. So the the easiest thing. A lot of people say, well, once you put your properties in a trust account and just let go. Well, the problem with the, doing that is if you have a trust account and it's mine and selling property, you have to be there to sign for it and everything else, whereas your trustee can't. 
So you're better off to have a C corporation that is handling everything and that way you can conduct business as usual and then you know whatever profits are going to be there that you potentially might have you might have to pay a consulting fee to a company to know what to do with things and get advice and that's something you could do but again I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not an accountant not telling you what to do always talk to your own people find out what's best for you it works for me anybody else have any questions where will this be posted I'll probably put it on YouTube a lot of information there I might cut out that last part I don't know But, you know, it's, each person is different. If you need the money personally, everything I just said won't, won't help you a bit. But if you're looking to take the money that you're making in trading and invest it into, you know, properties or whatever you want to invest in, uh, it's probably a good idea. But, you know, probably 90% of the people that won't work for Matter of fact, I, um, I didn't even have an accountant or anybody to, to teach me anything. I just had to learn it. I've been self-employed since I was in high school. I actually had a heating and air business when I was 18 years old in high school. Since I'd leave school, I'd go run service calls. I had major commercial accounts, Burger King, stuff like that. And uh, at 18 years old, I was making a grand a week in high school back in 87. And while we were in study halls, I was making business plans and price sheets and stuff like that. And everybody around me was just flunking in study hall. So that's all I've ever done is self-employed. I worked for someone for, uh, I guess I had a, a regular job for about three years of my life. I'm 53 now. So that's all I've ever done. I've had to figure it out myself. I had no college. Just street smart. Just know how to look at stuff and figure it out. I don't really. I think college is a waste anymore. I think it's the biggest racket ever. The only thing they do is teach you how to uh, study. That's all they do. Now some things you gotta have college. You know, if you're gonna be a doctor or something like that, I mean, you know, you you gotta go to school. But to to learn how to make money, you don't need college. Bill Gates dropped out. Elon Musk dropped out. About every, most of the, your big time people that you know never. I mean, they didn't learn in college. They just know how to do stuff. Well, guys, I'm going to call it a wrap. I think your all's questions are done. Good, uh, good stream. Hope y'all learned something. Um, always go to the website. If you got any questions, you can ask me later. Uh, DM me or something if you got a question about a certain indicator or, or Spybot lease or anything like that. Uh, Spybot's uh, doing pretty good. There's a lot of people making a lot of money with it. Uh, there are rules. If you don't follow rules, don't lease it because you're not going to make any money. You got to follow rules. And the same thing with um, indicators. If you're not going to follow the rules on the indicators, it's not the indicator's fault because the indicators work. You got to follow rules. If you can't do that, don't buy anything from me. Because it ain't going to work for you. And if you're uh, willing to follow rules, then you can pretty, well, pretty much pick anything on my website and it'll work. But you got to follow rules. How many people tell you not to buy anything? you got you got to do your part. you got to study. The spy bot is not something you lease it and turn it on today and start making millions of dollars. Because it's not. Spy bot lease is going to take you time. I tell everybody to trade on SIM sometimes for a month and get the hang of it. Learn how to follow the rules, learn how to run it, learn how to see the you know how it works and everything and then run it live. But it, again, if you're not gonna follow the rules, don't do it. It ain't gonna work for you. You can't turn it on, go to the beach, come back and be a millionaire. Can't do that. 
you gotta you gotta be with it. You gotta babysit it. You gotta watch it, and um, you have to uh, get your dailies. You know, you hit your profit target, shut it off, go do something else. Don't get greedy. That's even with trading. How many people in here have made you know five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten thousand, or whatever in a day, and then piss it all away at the end of the day, and 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 shut the computer off, and be three thousand dollars in a hole? I have. I, yeah, nine thousand. I lost it in a few days. <laughs> yeah, but you know you didn't follow rules. I mean, it's really what it is. Either you didn't know what the rules were in the beginning, or you didn't follow the rules you knew. It's one of the two. Uh, there's rules. Um, when I was teaching fish, is he in here? Uh, no, he's not in here. When I was teaching fish, a lot of hours he is uh, paid to learn what he's learned. But I told him that you know, his original goal was $300 a day. And, and I just laughed, and I said, well, I said, you know, this ain't going to take long. And so, you know, he got to where he was trading his um, MNQ, and he was trading like one, two, three, four uh, micros and making us $300. And he did that for, I don't know, two or three weeks, I guess. And um, and this is, I mean, this has been since last fall. He didn't just learn this in the last month, but last fall or so. And he started doing well, and I kept telling him, I said, you, you know, I said, it's costing you the same money to buy four micros as it is one mini. I said, you might as well make, you know, trade one mini and make more money and pay less commissions. And uh, so finally he did that, and you know, I said, you got to follow the rules. And the number one rule that I told him when he started trading minis, his goal was $300. And I said, you hit $300, quit. And... Um, Sometimes he wouldn't, and then you know, then he got to where he started. He hit a thousand dollars just in no time because trading a mini is, I mean, a lot of money. I said, well, I said your goal was three hundred dollars, so you know, once you get up to say five hundred or so, if you make a bad trade and it comes down to three hundred, stop. If you make a good trade, and now you're up to seven hundred dollars, then bring your goal to five hundred. And I said, you know, as soon as you lose on one trade, stop. And I said, and that way you can never really go broke on it. You're always going to have made money that day. And, you know, maybe it's a bad stop and, and you know, maybe you lost $300 and you come back down to 200 or whatever. I said, just stop. Don't think you can get that back because if you made a bad move, you more than likely broke a rule. And if you broke a rule, you're, you're probably going to break it again because now you're going to revenge trade. So number one rule is, you know, get your goal. Once you hit your goal, you know, maybe you make another trade. If you win, great. If you lose, stop. And that's, that's probably, that'll stop everybody from blowing up their account. And have a daily loss. If you're wanting to make 300, have a daily loss of 300. And you can't lose more than $300. So if you lose 300, quit. Come back the next day, you make 300, now you're back to break even. And, you know, at 300, you make one more trade. If you won, make another trade. If you win, make another trade. Keep doing that. And then when you lose, you know, at that point, you know, depending on where you are on your daily goal, you can either uh, quit or make one more trade. And if you lose a second trade, you definitely need to quit because then you're, you're just out of control. If you lose two in a row, you're, you're probably not trading right. So that's the number one rule yeah, for me. That's what I teach. And, um, you know, the second thing, uh, second rule is, well, I guess really the number one rule is to trade the indicator or bot or whatever according to the rules of that particular one. And then the second one would be about your finances. If you do those two things, you can't go broke. Got a lot of people in here that's not normally in here. Abushka boy, did you see that super trend I had on here a while ago? No, I kind of missed it. I had to um, go do my thing real quick. Yeah. So I'll probably watch the video. Yeah, it's in here. It'll help you. Yeah. 
for people struggling with the super trend, it'll, it'll help you. In my opinion, I think the mover is better than the super trend and the, the, the fact that um, the mover will allow you to scalp. But don't think that, you know, if you go in and you make $100 on one contract, $100 is a lot of money. Do it 10 times or $1,000. You know, don't get greedy. That's the number one problem with everybody, including me, is getting greedy. You know, like right here, we don't trade this. You know, we did drop out of that zone. So dropping out of that zone was a good time for a short. But look how it's done ever since, you know, we you know, had this run up right here. It's just went sideways. And right now we have a, uh, let's see, actually, I guess it would be right there is when we broke out. So right there is our channel right now. Yeah. So we're probably going to come right back down into here. Or might bounce off of this one here, come up to here, and then come down. But that's our channel right now. I thought someone was asking a question. That's the background. Well, I'm going to end this recording now. So if you have any questions, holler at me.